Hey, I'm Dr. Kenny Bramlett, and what we're doing today is going to show you the componentry and also the efficiency and the precision of using the ROSA technology, which is a robotic surgical assistant. We're going to take each step of alignment, positioning, digitization of the femoral component, typical component of the patient's you know, original anatomy to make a 3D construct so that we can also make a blueprint of what we need to do as far as resection. On the femoral side, we usually take about nine millimeters. Tibial side, usually about seven to 11. So somewhere in that range, we're gonna demonstrate that. It's important to know that knee replacements are just one part of orthopedic surgery that we do. Preventive health, preventive surgery, and preserving bone is the number one goal. A knee replacement is kind of an end stage deal. So if we can do protective componentry, prevent processing as far as having advancing disease, and also allow the patient to perform at a much higher level without implantation, certainly that's my goal. Surgery is good, but non-surgery is even better for the patient. Anytime we can conserve and maintain bone, their anatomy bone, their personal bone, by either with arthroscopy, cartilage re reimplantation, even smaller procedures which are minimal invasive, that's what we're gonna do. But today, let's show the ROSA, the steps through processing, the precision of it, we're going to show the resection and the alignment which is achieved. Obtaining mechanical axis, which is straight neutral knee, so a patient can increase their activities and be active, that's the ultimate objective. So bear with us. It'll be just a video we're showing in the operative procedure uh, theater downstairs at Surgical Institute of Alabama. We do outpatient total joints here. We've been doing that for several, several months now, and that's actually a year and we've been doing total joints as an outpatient for about 20 years now in Birmingham, Alabama. So it's a good procedure, we need it, but joint preservation is the pr first priority without question. So thank you for looking at this. If we can help in any way, if we can answer any questions, you can call for a consultation or just let us go online or look at our website. Some of this information may be helpful to you. Thank you again. Hi, good afternoon, I'm Dr. Bramlett and uh, I'm in Birmingham, Alabama. And we're gonna show you right now some information about total knees and where we are is going towards robotic technology, which is a computerized, digitized version of implantation of total knee, which is nothing more than a just femoral covering with a tibial covering. And that componentry comes together to give a nice range of motion. Now the issue is, how accurate, how reproducible, and how efficient can you be from a cost-effective point of view because that's the issue in healthcare today. So what we've brought in is the technology advancement in the Surgical Institute of Alabama is a Rosa robot. And this is made by Zimmer Corporation. It's a second generation robot. There have been many of these that have come across over the last five to 10 years, and they've added to the technology and the advancement of delivering knee surgery. So at this point, we're gonna show, this is the technology where we've been, and this is a sterile, well sterile now, but it's a surgical tray, which has approximately 70 to 80 instruments in it. All of these technical pieces that add to the case, piece by piece, and we've done this for a long period of time. It's excellent, it works great. But what's the next step? For outcome, reproducibility, and efficiency. So now we have this tray, which allows you to be able to use the ROSA robot, robotic surgical assistant, which is what ROSA stands for, to be able to be very efficient and reproducible because it's all about a good result is good, but a better result, reproducible result is better. We're not looking for average. We're trying to get as tight and as close as accurate as possible. Okay, the second step of our information here today is to show you what we have to do is categorize and document the anatomy of the femur and the tibia by making these anatomic landmarks very reproducibly accurate. We do that with a stylus. And by doing that, we can document the position of the patient's individual anatomic landmarks, okay? So we're gonna go through a few steps of this. The femoral canal entry point is here for total knee. These arrays allow us to get visual uptake so we can document the position in three dimension. This is three dimension reproducibility of the patient's individual anatomy. So this is how this works. Okay. Then the composition of the patient of their condyles 
in a similar fashion. So we're going to go through each dimension, top of the tibia, medial lateral, the condyle of the ankle, the proximal tibial metastasis, and each step of those will be documented in a digital format to document the patient's individual anatomy so we can get the mechanical alignment to reproduce a neutral mechanical axis anatomic knee replacement. So in this third phase, what we're showing is the patient's neutral alignment without any stress applied we need to document the patient's laxity, he be it varus or valgus, okay? And this is a sawbone, so it's not as deadly accurate as we'd hope, but you can see with the arrays, and take it through an effective range of motion, the computer, Rosa, picks up the patient's position, both in 90 degrees of flexion and full extension. And with those data points, stressing it both varus and valgus, we can then, quote, get a good picture of how the patient's anatomy lies, how much stress they can tolerate, and how we want to reproduce the position of the patient. So those are the key elements of realigning the patient's mechanical axis. Okay, so obviously the rows are super technical, and it's kind of intimidating at first when the surgeon looks at it because what you see is a significant number of data points, and it collects lots of data points. Data points of this femoral resection, this is the femur, both medial and lateral, the tibia, medial and lateral, and so this is the knee. So these are generally nine millimeters thick. This component here is usually approximately 10 to 11 millimeters thick at the lowest point. So 19 millimeters is what we've got to put implant between here and here. So that's why the numbers are designed to allow us to appropriate section without overcutting and certainly not undercutting so that we get the perfect position. Once that's in place, our flexion and extension gaps are controlled so that if we put the patient through a full range of motion, they have the same tightness, if you will, or you know, symmetric balance is what we're really going for. Symmetric balance of the knee as it goes through full extension all around the full flexion. And that balance allows patients to get that extra deep position, which they all want to be able to sit in a chair sit cross-legged, get a deep flexion set, and that's what's important, that's what we're trying to obtain. All right, so the next phase of this whole process is, we're looking at what we've created is a precise blueprint of each patient's custom anatomy. This morning, in fact, we've done two who have left here within two hours as an outpatient total knee. This is very easy to do if the patient has the appropriate physiologic and medical profile. Not every patient is optimal for an outpatient total knee, by no means but they're a large percentage. That grows as time goes on because people are getting more acquainted with the idea of a tap patient total joint, which we've been doing for many years. So this blueprint, if you will, is accurate enough so we know what our section cuts needs to be, what our alignment's gonna be. We've measured the patient ideal anatomy, now we're gonna move the Rosa arm in to make a precise cut on the femur. So this is cut block which has been registered by the position of the technology in the room, is stabilized. And now we're gonna walk it down to the distal femur. You come around there if you will. There it is. That's three-dimensionally accurate to the patient's own individual anatomy. So we take a saw, do that slot, and we make a cut. Okay, as Dr. Brantley again here, look, we're trying to finish up with this demonstration, but what we've got here, that's the bone we should cut from the femur and the tibia respectively. And we said we want to cut about 19 millimeters. And actually, that's about what that is if you combine both of those. So that's an accurate precision cut. That's because this is the cut guide from the Rosa arm, which gave us a just femur cut, that allows us to put in a total knee. And this is in place with appropriate position, what we chose on the blueprint is exactly what we're able to implant in the patient. Now, this is a sawbones, but in real life, it's a whole lot easier. 
saw modes are quite difficult. So I'm going to show you. This is our live cut screen, which we use, taking away the millimeters of cut. Now we're going to go back to our blueprint, and here we are. So we want to cut 19 millimeters, which that combination is about where we are. That gives us the gap balance, both flexion and extension. Essentially, all we're doing is quantitating the precision of process of doing it on the length. So this is a Rosa. I thought it'd be fair enough to give somebody some information about it. We've been using it. It's nationally recognized as a new technology for Zimmer Biomet to use in their implantation of total knees. For cementless implantation, which is what we use, that precision has to be deadly on. You can make up a lot of ground in irregularities with cement. Historically, that's what's happened. But you have an overvalued ability right now to make this much more precise, have a more athletic knee, and be aggressively able to get right up on it immediately post-op within a week or two, really, in all reality, go back to work, which we've done. We've just seen that weekly. We see this kind of result. So thank you for taking the time to look at it. Thank you.